welcome. Thank you so much for joining me for some yoga today. Uh, no props required for this class this morning, but as usual, anything that makes your practice more comfortable, if you like to use blocks or a blanket, something to sit on, please go ahead and set that near your mat so that you have it when you would like it. I'm going to start off today in a comfortable seated position, whatever that means for you today. You can, of course, be sitting cross-legged, on your knees. You can even be sitting in a chair if that's what makes your body feel the most comfortable and allows you to focus your attention inward rather than outward on what's happening in your body. So take a moment to get comfortably seated. Adjust anything that needs adjusting. And then close your eyes. See if you can begin to hear the sound of your own breath. Once you've caught the sound of your breath, maybe you can feel your breath moving through your body. So you hear the inhale, you feel at the same time the expansion of your lungs. You hear your exhale and you feel at the same time the light drawing backwards of the wall of your belly. Feel free to do as I'm doing, placing a hand on the heart and a hand on the belly. Or leave your hands wherever feels right to you today. Hearing the breath and feeling the breath. Next inhale, blink your eyes open. Reach your arms up overhead, have a nice little stretch there. Maybe leaning a little side to side or rolling out your wrists, really anything that feels pleasant up there. And just kind of a big wake up stretch. Feel free to move a little bit. And then from here, you're going to bring yourself into your table pose, hands and knees, hands under the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. As you arrive there, spread your fingers really nice and wide, see the color of your mat as much as possible between each of your fingers. Press the tops of your feet lightly down into the mat and lift your belly button up towards your spine. At the same time, draw your shoulders back away from your ears. So you feel quite strong and stable, very active here in this table pose. This is your inhale. As you exhale, you're gonna take your hips back towards your heels, elbows towards the mat, looking downward. Inhale, come back into that quite active table, drawing the shoulders back, pressing into the tops of the feet, lifting the belly. Exhale, soften all that, hips towards the heels, forearms towards the mat. Three more like that. Let's 
see if again you can hear your breath and feel how the breath helps you to move. As you inhale, everything expands. And as you exhale, kind of gently soften back towards the mat. The inhale stays the same. As you exhale, tuck your toes under, press down into your toes, and simply lift your knees away from the mat, maybe rounding your spine a little bit, tiny little cat pose with lifted knee. As you inhale, come back to neutral, untuck your toes, pull back to that child's pose. If it's too intense to lift the knees, go ahead and just come into a regular cat pose. So you're inhaling forward, shoulders back. Exhaling, tuck your toes, lift up, find that little bit of a cat shape in your spine. And then inhale, come down, untuck the toes. Exhale, sit all the way back. Three more at your own pace. And again, feeling how the breath helps you expand forward. And how that exhale helps to lift you up, bringing your belly button towards your spine. Hear the sound of your breath as you move through one more set. Remember that you can simply do a cat pose here of lifting the knees. It's a little too much so early. After you complete this last set, inhale, come back to your table, shoulders are back, pressing into the tops of your feet. As you exhale, tuck your toes under, you're going to round up, and this time you're going to lift your knees all the way up and come to downward facing dog. Maybe pedaling your feet around a little bit or swaying your hips. Feel free also to stay in your table and wiggle your spine around a little more from there. Take another breath, just moving in the way that feels most intuitive to your body. Inhale where you are. As you exhale, make your way back to your table pose. As you inhale, now soften the center of your chest, roll your shoulders back, keep pressing into the tops of your feet, but this time release your belly towards the floor. As you exhale, lift your belly up, keep pressing into the tops of your feet. So you're coming through cow. As you inhale and cat as you exhale. Three more like that. This is a really lovely place. You can give a nice deep exhale even out your mouth if you want to hear your breath. as you're ready. Back to a neutral spine. As you exhale, walk your hands a little bit in front of you. Great opportunity to just wiggle out those wrists. Slide your shoulders forward over the wrists so you're in a low plank position. Tuck your elbows back again. Press the tops of your feet down as you exhale to the floor. Keep pressing the feet down as you inhale. Lift the center of your chest. Find cobra. We're going to repeat our cobra four more times. So it can be nice and small to start with as you exhale, softening to the mat. As you inhale, you lift up. Exhale to lower. And inhale to lift. And maybe each time you go a little bit deeper. Maybe not. Feel free also, if rolling up and down doesn't quite work for you, to simply hold for five full breaths. Listening and feeling. As you make your way down to the mat one last time, press into your fingertips and lift back. Coming all the way towards child's pose this time, hips towards the heels. Actively keep crawling your fingertips as far forward as you can. 
feeling a deeper stretch in the upper back. And then inhale, come forward to your plank. Or excuse me, come forward to your table, not your plank quite yet. As you exhale, tuck your toes under, start to round up through your belly, lift your knees, come to your downward facing dog. Again, you can always choose to stay in your table here. Either way, maybe move around a little bit. And then walking, stepping, or hopping, bring your feet to the front of your mat. Coming for a forward fold, soft knees. You can rest your forearms on your thighs, your hands on your shins, or you can dangle all the way down towards the floor if that feels comfortable already. No matter where you are, your knees are a little bit soft. Your head is lovely and heavy. You can nod it and shake it. You can even shrug your shoulders around a little bit here. As you're ready, you're going to inhale up to a halfway lift and be sliding your hands up to your shins or your thighs, bringing your spine roughly parallel to the earth as you reach the crown of your head forward. Exhale, fold back down. Press into the heels of your feet. Keep your knees soft as you inhale. Slow ragdoll. Roll one vertebrae at a time to the sky, walking the hands on the thighs. If the lower back likes some support. When you reach standing, roll your shoulders back. Let your palms come by your sides, maybe rotating the hands lightly forwards. Inhale, take your arms up over your head, and again, just like we did in the seated position, just have a nice little stretch here. Do anything that feels good. Lifting up, wiggling the wrists, moving a little side to side. There's no wrong way to move. It's just what feels good. Inhale, reach straight up. And then as you exhale, press the palms of your hands together, fold back forward. You can bring again forearms to thighs, hands to the legs somewhere, fingertips all the way to the mat. Inhale, pick up your halfway lift. As you exhale, plant your fingertips down. Step your right foot to the back of the mat. Bring your right knee to the floor. Now, you're going to bring your fingertips to frame your left foot. Lift the center of your chest. Look forward. Roll your shoulders back. This is a great place if you like to use props to place blocks or anything else that works as a block underneath your hands. Shoulders are rolling back. Chest is lifting forward. Inhale here. As you exhale, plant your hands firmly underneath your shoulders. Tuck your back toe. Lift your back knee and step back to plank. You can stay in the high plank or you can have both knees on the floor for low plank. Lowering all the way to the mat. Press the tops of the feet down, squeeze the elbows in, just one cobra this time, inhaling to lift. Exhaling to lower, tucking the toes under, press yourself back, table pose, or lifting the knees downward facing dog pose. Wiggle your feet around a few times here, move your hips, wiggle your spine out. Left foot lifts to the sky as you inhale. Left knee comes towards the left nose, if this works in the table, or sliding the shoulders over the wrist in the downward facing dog. Left foot works to step up towards the front of the mat. Doesn't quite make it between the hands to show where to go. Bring your hands to the inside of the left foot. You're going to walk all the way to the long edge of your mat. Your right foot will turn to face it. Your left foot will turn to face it. Your fingertips come underneath your nose. Feel free to prop your hands up here. And then letting yourself fold as far forward as your body allows. Find a gentle stretch in the legs. Feel free to look back behind you if that space is there this morning. And on an inhale, you're going to lift up. Place your left hand underneath your nose. Twist over towards your right, bringing your right hand to your hip or your right arm up to the sky. Shrug your shoulders back a little bit and let your hips kind of just follow along in this one. Can you feel your inhale lifting your right shoulder or your right fingertips up towards the ceiling? 
Can you feel your exhale as you float back down towards the floor, planting the right hand down? Inhale, lift open to the right, twisting right hand, excuse me, to the left, left hand to the hip or left arm to the sky, twisting in the opposite direction. Again, let your hips just come along for the ride. They don't need to be held in any certain position. They can be a little bit off center here. Slide your shoulders back. Inhale, deeply feel the lift. Exhale, fold down to the mat. Remember, repeat that twice more on each side. So as you inhale, you find the lift up into the twist. And as you exhale, you float back to the mat. Go at the pace of your own breath. Folding all the way back down. Find your forward fold again as you exhale, feeling the stretch in your legs. And then inhale, press your fingertips down, come to halfway lift. As you exhale, soften your knees a little bit, start to walk to the back of your mat. Your right foot will turn to face it. Your left foot will turn to face it. You're going to leave your left knee lifted here, placing your fingertips on either side of your right foot. Shrug your shoulders back, lift the center of your chest as you inhale. As you exhale, straighten your right leg a little bit, pulling your hips to the back of the mat. Inhale to come forward, lunge position. Exhale to move back, pyramid position. You can flip your right toes up. You can be placing your hands here on props on either side of your right foot for a little bit more space. And we'll do this twice more. Work at your own pace. You come all the way back to lunge, right knees over the right ankle. You're going to walk your hands again to the inside of front foot, and this time you're going to walk all the way back to the front of the mat. Left foot turns to face it, right foot turns to face it, plant your hands down, step back to downward dog, or knees to the floor, table pose. Take a few breaths. You could choose from here to stay in table or dog or even drop for a rest in child's pose. Or you could take a half vinyasa, inhaling forward to your plank, knees up or down. Exhaling, come all the way again to the floor. We're going to keep going with cobra for a few more sets. Press the tops of your feet down. Shoulders roll back. You're pressing your feet down firmly. Maybe your kneecaps even get a little bit of elevation. Exhale to release and we'll all meet back in table or downward dog. Take a deep breath in. Left foot again floats up. Bend the left knee, stack the left hip on top of the right. Find the scorpion pressing down into your left hand. Inhale, square the hips. Exhale, step the left foot to the front of the mat. Soften the right knee. Step the right foot next to the left. Inhaling to find halfway lift. Exhaling to fold. Inhaling to roll yourself one smooth breath. Arms can come out and up if you like, all the way to the sky. Exhale, let your hands float gently by your sides. Take a deep, full breath here. Notice the sound of that breath and the movement of the breath. Maybe the breath is moving a little more deeply now. With the next inhale, bring your arms up. Exhale to fold forward. Inhale, find halfway lift. As you exhale, you're going to plant your fingertips down. You're going to step your left foot to the back of the mat. Bring your left knee to the floor. Untuck your toes. Shrug your shoulders back. Lift the center of your chest. Again, you could be placing blocks on either side of your front foot here. You just want to be lifting a little bit, almost like you're attempting to come into a cobra in this lunge type position. As you exhale, your hips move back a little bit. Plant your hands firmly on the floor. Tuck your back toe under. Lift your back knee. See if you can shoot back that right leg to plank. Now, of course, you can always take a low plank. Knees on the floor. Or a high plank, knees elevated. Either way, exhale to the mat. Last set of cobra. 
and then you have the option to switch. Press the tops of the feet down, maybe the knees even float. Lift the center of the chest, inhale. Exhale to release, tuck the toes under, we'll meet back in table. Or downward facing dog. And as you inhale, float your right foot up to the sky. As you exhale, step your right foot up to the front of the mat. If it doesn't quite make it between your hands, just show it where to go. Lift up through the center of your chest as you breathe in. As you breathe out, walk your hands to the inside of your right foot. You're going to walk all the way to the long edge of the mat. Left foot turns to face it, right foot turns to face it. I'm simply going to turn around so I'm facing you. You do not need to move on your mat. You're back in that wide-legged forward fold. Let go. Fold down. Relax here for one more deep breath. And then inhale. Lifting up halfway. I'm do something a little bit different on this side. As you inhale, press your fingertips down, blocks or floor. As you exhale, turn your right toes a little bit to angle towards the right front corner of your mat. Bend your right knee as you straighten your left leg, maybe walking your fingertips up towards the front of your mat. Maybe you drop your bum down for skandasana with the toes flipped up, kind of the folk dancing variation. Maybe you stay a little higher, even bring your hands to your thighs. Take a breath here. Roll your shoulders down away from your ears. And then you're going to walk over to the other side, turning your left toes to angle a little bit, bending your left knee as you straighten your right leg. Your variation, you can be high, hands on the thigh, medium, hands on the floor, or prop, or low, dropping the hips. And we're just going to go side to side in the way that feels best to you two more times. So you walk on the inhale over to the front of the mat, bending the right knee, straightening the left leg. And then you go the other direction, bending the left knee, straightening the right leg. One more in each direction. When you're ready, come back to the center line. You're back in that wide-legged forward fold. Press your fingertips down, lift up halfway, and then walk to the back of your mat. Your left foot is going to turn to face it. Your right foot is going to turn to face it. You're going to leave your right knee lifted. Shrug your shoulders back as you inhale. As you exhale, straighten that left leg, pull your hips back. Inhale to come forward. Exhale to come back. Again, you can always prop your hands up here. That gives a lot more space if your back or your hamstrings happen to be tight. The important thing is that you're moving with your breath. Inhale all the way back to your lunge. Walk your hands to the inside of that left foot. Walk all the way back to the front of the mat. Right foot turns to face it. Left foot turns to face it. Plant your hands down and step back, downward facing dog or table pose, your choice. Again, you could stay right here. You could drop to a pose of rest before we continue, or you can keep it a little more energetic, floating through a half vinyasa, inhaling to plank. If you like from high plank, you can do a full push-up and go to upward facing dog. You can continue also to lower all the way down, going to cobra, or perhaps taking it to sphinx, elbows under the shoulders. Meeting back in a table or downward facing dog. Float your right foot to the sky as you inhale, bend your right knee, stack your right hip on top of your left, scorpioning, pressing the right hand down as you kick the right foot behind you. Inhale, square your hips. Exhale, step it up. Inhale, soften the back knee, step the left foot next to the right, finding your halfway lift. Exhaling to fold. Inhaling to roll yourself all the way up to the sky. Exhaling to float the hands by the side. 
Take a nice, deep, full breath. Feel it. Hear it. Maybe you can even start to see the breath. You can visualize it. Expanding your lungs, opening up your rib cage, rolling your shoulders back as you inhale. You can see your whole body relaxing, shoulders down, belly relaxing, hips relaxing as you exhale. On your next inhale, you'll take your arms up over your head. On your exhale, you fold forward. Inhale, pick up your halfway lift. As you exhale, plant your fingertips down, step your right foot back. This time you'll leave your right knee lifted. Front knee is over the front ankle. Plant your right hand to the inside of your left foot. Reach your left arm forward. Inhale here, trying to touch the wall in front of you with those left fingertips. And then twist on your exhale all the way open towards your front leg, towards your left. Shrug your shoulders back, lift your hips up. When you're ready, circle the arm all the way down to the back of the mat and back down to the inside now of your front foot. We're walking again to the long edge of the mat. Right foot turns to face it. Left foot turns to face it. Keep going to the back of the mat, bending your right knee, straightening your left leg, skandasana. Inhale to the front of the mat, bending the left leg, straightening the right leg. Now we're going to go all the way to the back of the mat. You want to kind of like stamp your right foot down and then move all the way back, placing your fingertips to frame your right foot, turning your left foot to face straight forward and back. We're going to go back to that pyramid. So as you inhale, lift the center of your chest. As you exhale, pull your hips back, straightening the front leg a little bit. Inhale forward to left. Exhale to pyramid. Try a couple more like that. This next one, you come back to your lunge. Front knee is over the front ankle. Here you're going to lift up a little bit from your belly button, from your hips. Roll your shoulders back, get light on your fingertips. That might feel like plenty today. Or you might lift your hands to your thigh or your arms out behind you like airplane wings. Press firmly down into your right heel on the side. I had to think really hard about that one. And then see if you can peel yourself up to a crescent lunge. You can place your hands on your thigh or your arms up towards the sky. Take a few deep breaths here. Inhale where you are. As you exhale, fold forward, bring your hands to the inside of that right foot, walking to the long edge of the mat. This time the hands will pause underneath the nose, and you'll find that wide-legged forward fold as you exhale. Inhale, find halfway lift, press your hands down to the floor to block. Exhale to fold. A few more like that, lifting, feeling the inhale. Softening, releasing the exhale. Next time you inhale, you're going to lift up and walk all the way back to the front of the room. Left foot turns to face it, right foot turns to face it. You're gonna take your left leg straight to the sky for a three-legged table or three-legged dog. If you inhale, bend your left knee, stack your left hip on top of your right, find your scorpion pose. If you feel really frisky and you wanna go a step further, you could go into your wild thing, or some people call this flipping your dog, press firmly down into your right set of fingertips. As you lean a little bit back behind you, you place your left foot on the floor. Maybe you lift your left arm to the sky. Make sure that your wrist feels comfortable here. Maybe you take a deep breath, lifting your belly button up. And then you have to do the hard part coming back. You have to lower your left hand down as you lift 
your left leg up. We meet back in three-legged dog. And then you're going to bring that left foot or left knee to the floor, table, or downward facing dog. As with the first set, feel free to stay in your table or your dog or even come to a pose of rest. We're going to come through a half vinyasa, inhale into plank. Exhaling knees up or down to the floor. Inhaling, you could find cobra or sphinx or up dog. Exhaling down, hands under the shoulders, we'll make our way back and we'll all meet in table or downward dog. Left foot flows to the sky on the inhale. Left foot steps up between the hands on the exhale. Inhale, you're gonna rock your weight forward to that left foot. The right foot goes light. Maybe it even steps in a few times so that you can lift the right leg behind you, straightening the left leg. Feel free to walk your fingertips forward for support on the floor or on props, or to try to float your hands into warrior three wherever assists you. Solid all the way through that back leg. You can point the toes today or you can flex the foot, whatever works better to help you feel like this back leg is strong and stable. Try another breath or two. And then you're going to curl the right leg in and place the right foot on the floor close to the left. Find your forward fold. Exhale. Let go. Inhale. Half lift. Exhale to fold, and inhale to roll yourself up to the sky. Exhale, let your hands float down by your sides. We'll take a few deep breaths here, resetting, reconnecting with the breath before we move to that second side. With the next inhale, bring the arms up. With the exhale, fold all the way forward. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, you step your left foot back. You're going to leave your left knee lifted this time. Plant your left hand down, block or floor. Lift your hips, lift your belly, reach your right arm forward as you inhale. Again, you're trying to touch as far to the wall in front of you as you can. And then on your exhale, you find the twist. You're coming from the space where your spine is really lovely and long. And you have so much space to enjoy this twist. As you're ready, circle the hand down and back, bringing the hands down to the inside of your right foot. You're going to walk to the back of the mat. Bending your left knee, straightening your right leg. Inhale, come back to the center. Bending your right knee, straightening your left leg. Your version of Skandasana. Coming all the way back to the center line. You're going to walk all the way to the back of the mat. Left foot turns to face it. Stamp that left foot down. Right foot turns to face it. Shrug your shoulders back. Inhale, lift the center of your chest. Exhale, straighten your left leg as you fold into pyramid. Inhale to lunge. Exhale to pyramid. Your own pace. Bringing that left knee over the left ankle. Fingertips plant down. You want to feel strong and solid here. If you feel like your feet are really far apart, feel free to step your right foot a little bit closer, your back foot a little bit closer to your front foot. Press down into your heel. Lift your hips, lift your belly. Take your shoulders back. You're light on your fingertips. Maybe you can even float them. Maybe you want to go a step further and bring your hands onto your thigh or your arms behind you. Firm up through your core. And maybe as you're ready, you can lift all the way up to crescent lunge, peeling your belly away from your thigh. You could rest your hands on your hips. I'm also often quite partial to hands on the thigh. It feels quite stable to me. And of course, you could always come arms up to the sky. Pardon me, I have something on the sole of my foot. You can stay in your lunge there, lifting your arms potentially up to the sky. Opening the center of the chest for a few deep breaths here. And 
inhale where you are. As you exhale, you fold to the inside of that left foot. You're going to turn back to the long edge of the mat and find your wide-legged forward fold, hanging out for a few breaths here. Feel the stretch at the back of your legs. Enjoy. And then lifting up halfway. Inhale. As you exhale, make your way all the way back to the front of the mat. Right foot turns to face it. Left foot turns to face it. Plant your hands under your shoulders. You're going straight back to three-legged table or three-legged dog. Right leg to the sky. Inhale. Exhale, bend the right knee, stack the right hip on top of the left. Really firmly press into your right fingertips as you do that. And then if you feel quite stable, you want to test out your flip ability, you are welcome to now lighten up onto your right fingertips, dropping your right foot behind you. You'll have to rotate on this stable foot on the left foot, maybe taking the right arm to the sky. Especially if you haven't tried it before, it can be quite frightening. But luckily you're close to the floor, so if you fall, it's not too far away to catch you. The hard part is always coming back, flipping forward, right hand comes down, right foot comes up, back to three-legged dog as you inhale. As you exhale, let's take that right foot down to the mat, or right knee down to the mat. Option to relax a little bit, or to take that half vinyasa if you're feeling frisky, plank, slow push up. You can take cobra, or sphinx, or up dog. And then we'll all meet back in table or downward facing dog. Right leg floats to the sky. Inhale. Right leg steps up to the front of the mat. Lighten up again. Like you're trying to lift your belly away from your thigh. You're trying to roll your shoulders back. Get kind of a little bit of pressure going down through your right foot as you now lighten your left leg. Maybe walking your fingertips in front of you. Think about your hands being roughly underneath your shoulders. Maybe floating the hands, testing yourself out. And all I want for you to feel is that this that leg behind you, this left leg, is stable. I don't mind today if you're pointing or flexing the toes. I don't mind if your hip is a little bit open. I just want you to feel the stability of your legs. Even if it's only for a fraction of a second. Maybe try another breath or two here. Curl the left knee, do hands on the floor, or try for a little bit of extra balance. Left foot, comfortable distance from the right foot, find your forward fold as you breathe out. Halfway lift as you breathe in. Exhale to soften. And inhale to roll yourself all the way up to the sky. Exhale, float your hands down by your sides. Take a few breaths. Reconnect. Consciously feeling. Inhale. And exhale. The next inhale, reach your arms up. With the exhale, fold gently forwards. Inhale, find a halfway lift. As you exhale, plant your hands down. This time you can just walk or step your feet back to table or back to downward facing dog. Take a deep, full breath there. Really lift your hips if you're in dog, up and back. Maybe give your hips a little wiggle. That works in table or dog. Shake your tail. And then lift your right foot to the sky. Inhale. Step your right foot up to the front of the mat. Bring your left knee to the floor. Bring your hands again to the inside of your right foot. And you're going to take your right foot and you're going to walk it a little bit out to the outer edge of your mat. So heel toe it out. It can even be off the mat here. I prefer to angle my right toes out to the right. You might prefer to have your foot a little more square. See what works for you. Fingertips to the floor or hands to blocks. Lift the center of your chest and roll your shoulders back again for lizard. You could stay right here. If that's too much for your inner hips, it's quite uncomfortable and not in a stretchy way, in a kind of painful way, go the other direction. Take your hips back, fold forward. You can 
always be placing a block here underneath your hands or underneath your forearms. You just want to feel the inner hip crease. If you're in the forward kind of folding variation here, you're going to maybe feel the inside of your right hip crease. If you're in the I'm taking my hips down and lifting my chest variation, you're probably going to feel a little bit of that right hip crease, but you're also going to feel a nice deep stretch on the left side. And if you're there and you like that and you want more, you can always look back towards your left leg and fold your left foot in, potentially reaching your right hand around to catch. It's something that is 100% optional. It's a nice quad stretch, but we're going to do another quad stretch later. Don't feel like you're missing out if this option is not a comfortable place for your body. Take another breath or two and whatever variation of this lizardy stuff you're in. And then you're going to release. Bring your hands back to the inside of your right foot. You're going to take your hips back. Leave your right leg a little wide as you straighten the right leg a little bit, maybe flipping the right toes up for a little bit of a half split. So you can fold yourself forward here. You are welcome if it's comfortable for you to sit back onto your left heel as you fold forward. That's something that feels good to some knees and thighs and not others. So you can be sitting quite far back and folding forward here, or you could be quite a bit more up, more stacking your left hip above your left knee. Whatever works for you. We'll take a few breaths, enjoy. Inhale to come forward. You're going to wiggle your right foot back in so you can put your right hand underneath your right shoulder and you're going to shoot your right leg back to three-legged table as you inhale. As you exhale, place your right knee down but place it behind your left knee and then you're going to slide your left knee back next to your right knee so now you're in a low plank. Exhale slowly to the floor. Let your hands come back by your hips or by your thighs. Palms are on the mat. Fingertips are pressing down. Your nose is hovering right above the mat. We're going to do a little locust. As you inhale, you're going to lift just your right leg. Squeeze it to the center line and then lower it down. As you inhale again, you're going to lift just your left leg. Squeeze it to the center line and then exhale it to the mat. Both legs stay down, feet pressed to the mat. Lift the center of your chest as you inhale. Keep the fingertips grounded. Exhale to float. Last one is everything at the same time. Lift the chest, lift both of the legs. Think about lifting your thighs away from the mat, but keep your fingertips pressing down today. Exhale to release. Put your hands under your shoulders. Go back towards your child's pose, taking your knees wide. Forehead to the floor. Take a few deep breaths here. It's a lovely place to hear the breath. You kind of have a nice little echo chamber with your body. Really notice how it sounds. And the next breath will come back to table or downward facing dog, your choice. Taking this over to the other side. Lift the left leg up as you inhale. As you exhale, step the left foot forward. Bring the right knee to the mat. Bring the hands to the inside of the left foot, and then you're going to take the left foot a little bit wide. Maybe angling those left toes out to the left. And again, you can try dropping the hips forward, lifting the chest. Feel free to put props underneath your hands. You can feel free to go to the opposite variation, folding forward here, hips back. You can do some of both just one. If you happen to go to this forward variation, you can go for the extra quad stretch if you would like, looking back over your left shoulder towards your right foot. You might see if you can bring it towards you. Maybe you can catch with your left hand, your right foot. So it's opposite hand to foot. If that feels good, you can stay. Another deep breath here. 
and then release. Hands come again to the inside of your left foot. You're going to take your hips back, straightening your left leg a little bit. So you can wiggle your left toes forward and flip it up. And we're just keeping the leg out to the side just to experience maybe a slightly different stretch in our hamstring. Usually we do this with our foot or our leg straight in front of us. Having this angle gets into a little bit different area. The hamstrings are a set of muscles, so it's nice to see if we can access them a little bit differently sometimes. Maybe you like to do the variation where you sit back onto your right heel. And if you have tight quadriceps, um, this can be a really nice stretch, but it can also be a double-edged sword where it's too tight and it hurts the kneecap. If you get back here and your kneecap hurts or the top of your foot hurts unduly, come back to the variation where you're stacking your right hip more above your right knee as you fold forward. Both will give you the target of the left hamstrings. tucking my right toes under back behind me because my foot got a little crampy sitting back there on my heel. Alright, take another deep breath and then release. You're going to wiggle that left foot back into the center line so you can frame your foot with your hands. Take your hips back, rock your right no, excuse me, rock your left leg out behind you for three-legged table. And then drop your left knee down, but it's behind your right knee as if you were crawling backwards. And then the right knee comes back next to the left knee. You're already in low plank, so you can just lower yourself gently to the floor. All the way down. Slide your hands back. Press the palms of the hands down. As you inhale, now lift your left leg. Squeeze to the center line. And exhale to the mat. Inhale, lift your right leg, squeeze to the center line, and lower down. This time it's just the chest, inhale to lift, tops of the feet press down, maybe the knees even elevate, fingertips press down, exhale to release. Everything comes up except for the fingertips. Think about lifting your thighs away from the floor, inhale, exhale to release. Hands come under the shoulders, press back again to that child's pose, knees a little bit wide forehead to the floor. We'll add a little twist here. Press your fingertips down, lift up through the palms of your hands, lift your forehead, lift your elbows. Take your right arm and thread it underneath your left armpit for a twist. Know that you can always take this twist from a table instead of a child's pose if that's better for your body. You're ready. Unthread your twist. Your right arm comes forward. Your left arm will come underneath the right armpit, finding your twist. As you're ready, you're going to unwind. Crawl your fingertips out in front of you. Lift your hips. You're going to lie yourself all the way down onto your belly. And go for that quad stretch again. You can bring your arms in front of you, resting your forehead on your arms if you like. Maybe give your buns a little wiggle from side to side, just loosening up your hips. And then bring your right foot towards your buttocks. Reach around with your right hand and hold on. If the foot and the hand do not like to connect, feel free to use a strap. Sweat sock works really well here, a rolled up towel. So you can pull the right foot down towards the buttocks. Again, you can rest your forehead down, or you can look over to one side. And as you do this, and you pull the foot towards the buns, you can continue as well to press your right hip towards the mat to accentuate that stretch. 
Take a few deep breaths here. When you're ready, release. We'll go to the other side, bringing the left foot towards the left buttocks, perhaps reaching around with the hand, pulling the foot towards the bum, using a prop as needed, and then press the front of the left hip down. As you do that, you'll probably feel a deeper stretch through the front of your left thigh. It can help stretch a little deeper there when the quadricep area is quite tight. you're going to leave your forehead resting down and you're going to take both of your feet up, kind of your calves uh, perpendicular to the floor. You can take your feet a little, or your knees a little wider rather, and now just swing your feet a little bit from side to side like giant windshield wipers. Just massaging your quadriceps a little bit. Alright, as you're ready, Bring your feet down. You might have to wiggle your legs back in. Hands under the shoulders. Press yourself back to seat it. Swing your legs out in front of you. Give them a little wiggle, a little shake. Make sure you're in the middle of your mat so you can roll yourself all the way down to the floor. When you come down to the mat, Take a deep breath, just totally relax. Draw the soles of your feet in so your knees are pointing up towards the sky. Couple of options here. You could take a supine pigeon pose, crossing your right ankle over the top of your left knee, drawing your left knee in towards you. If that feels good in the outside of your right hip, go with that one. You could also take a supine cow face or sutta gomukhasana, crossing your right thigh over the top of your left thigh, maybe drawing your knees in towards you. If you do that option, you can hold behind your thigh or you can hold on to your ankles or feet and move your feet or ankles around until you find a stretch. Your choice. See where you feel your outer right hip. take this into a twist and again a couple of options you can take your twist with your legs all wound up taking your knees over to the left you can take your twist with your right ankle over the top of the knee taking the knees over the left in that case your right knee kind of points up towards the ceiling or my personal favorite variation is just uncrossing my legs and taking my stacked knees over to the left Find what works for you in this twist. Maybe extend your right arm out and gaze towards your right fingertips. Inhale, come back to the center. Maybe rock a little bit from side to side, unwinding your leg. And we'll do that same thing on the other side. Again, you could do pigeon, left ankle over the top of the right knee, maybe knees in towards you. You could slide the thighs closer together, bringing the knees in for cow face, maybe holding the feet or the ankles as needed. You can decide what works for your hips best today.
and then they'll take this into the twist. And again, if you're going to the right on this twist, you could take the crossed up legs over, you can uncross the legs, or you can do the variation. Whereas you're in pigeon, you take your right foot to the floor and you just fall over to the right left foot rests on the floor, left knee will point up. Your preference of twistiness here. Maybe extending your left arm and looking to the left again. back to the center line. You can uncross your legs, hug them into your chest and rock a little bit from side to side. Maybe turning the soles of your feet up, coming to happy baby if you like. Drawing the knees wide. From here we'll go right to Shavasana. If there's any other pose or shape that you need, feel free to add that in before arranging your body in a comfortable resting space for you. Remembering that the shape of your Shavasana is not important. It's the relaxation that you are able to achieve there that is important. So finding that space that is truly relaxing for your body. And just as we've been doing this whole class, see if you can hear the sound of your breath. If you have an ujjayi breath in your practice, you're more than welcome to come into that now, making the breath even a bit more audible. And once you are able to connect to hearing your breath, you feel the breath. Extremely subtle movement of your shoulder blades against the mat as you breathe in. Gentle softening of your low back as you breathe out. Maybe you even visualize the breath. Visualize what happens to the body as it moves with the breath. minutes today. Why not stay and enjoy your relaxation? When it's time to return to your day, wiggle your fingers and your toes. Making your way as you're ready all the way over to one side to rest for a few breaths. seated position. Gathering your hands in front of your heart. We'll 
close with our deep breath together in through the nose, out through the mouth on three. One, two, three. Namaste. Thank you so much as usual for sharing not just your practice, but your time and your space with me. Have a wonderful rest of your day.